come looking for you. <laughs> Get up. Go downstairs and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said, I am the one you are looking for. Why have you come? Look at your neighbor and say, just go. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I've, I've preached this text many a times and we always get to the place where we see the sky open up but we never understand what happens when, when the sky closes up again or does it. We know that the sky opens up and there's a sheet. There's a sheet and what you got to understand is in this sheet, my brother, God says you shall not hunger for anything anymore. In other words, I'm taking off the limitations. See, he's taking off the limitations. See, the Old Testament told you not to eat anything with scales on it. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. God said, if I made it, eat it. But you got to understand what I'm hearing and I never saw it until just now. What God said, when I cover you, I provide for you. You better hear the word of God. Amen. If you're covered by the Lord, he said you are provided for. So if I'm provided for, I should not be worried. In the covering, he said, I got this corner, that corner, this corner, that corner. Covered. So, in other words, I got, y'all better hear this, I got my serapents all around you. Amen. I've surrounded the spirit of Jesus. And many a times I'm sitting here and I'm saying, Lord, this church has been here since 1952. My God. Uh -huh. And here we are in 2018, we went and bought it along over a church that God's been watching since 1952. So this is the house of God, covered by God, and in the covering there is provision. But one thing about when God provides for you, he said, don't you look at no other gods for provision. I'm taking you out of the, I'm taking you out of a place where, where your expectations are no longer yours. Your expectations now are the expectations of God. So God says, telling Peter, and, and, and many times when we hear this text, we, we get here and we get caught up in what's clean and what's unclean, and God said, be on your pay grade. In other words, I'm judging whether this is worthy, that is worthy, is this good to eat or that's good to eat. God said, too much thinking. Anything I made, don't call it unclean. And say what? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop there just for a minute, since y'all wanna talk about this clean and unclean, because you don't understand who he's talking to. As I read this text as an immature saint, I saw that that he was talking about the the, 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 the creepy crawly things and the beasts and the, and the, and the birds. But what he was saying, my God, my God, three times I told you, call nothing I made unclean. Nothing I made unclean. Nothing I made unclean. Why did he keep saying it? Because you did not understand what he was saying. Stop doubting yourself because I made you. Stop doubting yourself. God says you don't feel worthy, and worthiness says you don't feel like you've been sanctified, purified by God. And what, I, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm feeling right now in the spirit, I'm feeling that we don't understand that the fact that we, the day that he put us here, the process of making began, and there's nothing but me that can take me out of the place of knowing who my maker is. 
the world tries, and I don't want to say it tries, it, it, it succeeded in my life. And I am pretty sure it succeeded, if not still succeeding, in your life. Amen. So, what I'm saying is, it makes you feel like you're not worthy of the call that God has called you unto. And see, when I'm walking in this place of unworthiness, it makes me hesitate. When I'm walking in this place of doubt, it makes me think that, you know, this has been going on so long, but I told you the one thing about God. God ain't setting you up for a, a temporary blessing. He's taking, setting you up for an eternal anointing. You better hear the word of God. The world will bless you for a little while. But God said, what comes fast, goes go fast. fast. Right. What comes slow, shall last. You better hear the word of God. Amen. <laughs> Boy, I almost went somewhere with that. But what I'm trying to tell you right now, in the name of Jesus. He said, he saw the sky open and something like a large sheep was let down by the four corners. In the sheep were all sorts of animals, reptiles, and birds. Why y'all trying to devour man? I don't see no man in the sheep. Y'all running around trying to devour each other. He did not say eat, kill. He said he was telling you, only what's in the sheep have I provided for you. Everything else that's created in my image is for me. Everything that was created in the image of God is for him. Hmm. Now, how do I bless God? We always we're so busy concerning ourselves with, with God blessing us. How, but, but have I matured to the place of where I realize it's better to be a giver than a receiver? And even if I give unto God, that I, I'm still more blessed because I understand the magnitude of giving. Even though I know God has everything to give to me, I understand the magnitude of giving. How do I bless God? Amen. Preach, preach, missionary. Preach. <laughs> I bless God. This is what I like about the spirit of Jesus. We don't just tell you what's going on. We tell you how to, how to keep it going if God wants you to know it's going. And, uh, this is how I bless God. Whatever's for him, I take care of it. Amen. You were made for him. When I take care of you, I'm blessing God. It's not that complicated. So now, if I'm not taking care of you, what am I doing? And I'm cursing you out. What I'm doing? Hello, somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm making this real, real, real simple for you. Either I'm blessing God or I'm cursing God. Ain't no middle. Ain't no middle ground. If I want to bless God, I take care of what He created for Himself. He gave me the birds. He gave me the creepy crawler thing. He gave me the fish. He gave. He said these things are for you. But I don't see no man in this sheep. I don't see no woman in this sheep. That's right. So these, your, your brother ain't for you. That woman, even though she might be your wife, she, at the end of the day, she ain't for you. My God, my God. Come on, bitch. And it's the same how we, as husbands, take possession of what, what we are only supposed to look over temporarily with a passion. Come on, I'm going to look over my wife with a passion for a season. But here we are. We sit here and we want to take ownership. You better come here, woman. You better put that phone down, woman. You better. Don't you wait. Don't wait. Whatever you do, don't wait. <laughs> <laughs> don't wait, baby. Don't wait. Can't let her wait today because the fast is over. <laughs> Can you make her mad today? So here we are. As I tell you this, it says we get stuck right here over what's clean and unclean. But the bottom line is I want you to understand something. When the sheep is lifted up, watch what it happened. What happened to the sheep, Pastor? It says then suddenly the sheep was pulled up to heaven. What do you understand? God said, and what it covered came with it. You better hear the word of God. This seven days 
that we've been on a fast put on by God, and the beautiful thing about a God fast, you don't know what you're fasting from until it's over. Amen. Right. Amen. Ain't that something? Something out of your life and you don't know why it's out of your life. Now, we done been on many a fast. You know when you get on that fast, you put on your ugly face, your, your, your holy face. You know that whole. What's wrong with you? I'm fasting for the Lord. Y'all know y'all put on y'all sanctified face. With y'all fast. What's wrong with you? I'm fasting for the Lord. Y'all know y'all got that ugly, y'all that, that holy face. And God says, if you're really fasting, Nobody should know. Amen. Go about your way. See, if I'm if I'm if I want to tell the world and everybody that I come in contact that I'm fasting, it ain't about God. It's about me. He said nobody should know if it's a real fast. But what I want to tell you right here, he said now when the sheep suddenly went up, Peter was very perplexed. What could the vision mean? And here is Peter, just like us. Man, I heard Pastor preach that sermon. Man, what could what could that sermon mean mean for me? And Peter was perplexed. He was a vision. Don't you eat nothing? Don't you eat nothing unclean? And here's Peter in the middle, in the middle of uh, uh, of trying to figure out. I wonder where you was. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You. Anybody got a right to reason to lose track of time right now? It's you, baby. Mm -hmm. Then he said, Peter was very perplexed. What could the vision mean? Just then. <laughs> Cornelius, so Cornelius he, was, he, was, he was a general. He had to send some guys to get Peter. Just then, the men sent by Cornelius found Simon's house. Standing outside the gate, they asked if a man named Simon Peter was staying there. Now, y'all know how y'all do. When you know you ain't living right, you know any reason, any day, if, 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 any moment, the police can knock on your door. If somebody come looking for you and you don't know they coming, you don't know who it is until y'all know you done hit the back door. <laughs> So hang on three men. <laughs> Come look at my Peter. And Peter, Peter said to him, perplexed about a vision he, he got from God. And so now we want to be an authority. Sometimes my wife asked me, she said, baby, I had a dream. Most of the times I can, I can interpret a dream for her. But sometimes I just don't know. But because you are a man of God, a woman of God, you think you always know what the dream is interpreted. Otherwise, you won't be Joseph. Y'all want to be, everybody want to be, well, I'm David. I'm Joseph. Well, I'm Job. But don't nobody want to be Jesus. Everybody want to be Job, David, Solomon. But I don't see nobody want to get on that cavalry walk and be. Hmm. Hello, somebody. Right. So here you are. You got to interpret every dream because if you don't, you, you won't be Joseph. Hmm. Sometimes you don't know and God put stuff in your face and let somebody come to you with, come to you with a dream to interpret to see the lie you're going to tell. Uh -huh. <laughs> the only one that knows all things all the time is and you are just a you are just a messenger of God. So God will try you to see if it's your message or it's my message. And sometimes God say, I didn't, you know I didn't give you nothing. Come on, come on. All right, Miss. You know I didn't give you nothing. <laughs> but you always got to have something for everybody. Mm. Yesterday, I could have I could have prayed for everybody in the church. But God told me, ask those who want deliverance to come up. Now, I felt some people should have came up, but, but I couldn't make them come up and God didn't give me nothing for them. It was just so beautiful how at first nobody acted like they wanted to come. After I called a young man and who came? And then Sister Veronica came and then Missionary Sierra came and and then you notice how they just stopped. Everybody just wanted to just stop coming up one at a time, wanting deliverance. 
And it was so beautiful how God said, one at a time. And everybody that came, God took. Did you see the brother? Anybody see the, the first brother? Did you, I mean, he didn't shout. He didn't, he didn't Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He didn't slobber. But did you feel the deliverance? And the woman of God, she was so caught up when God told her what she had to do. She thought she had to go home and take it out. He said, when you take it, I leave it out for 30 days. She, she said, I just put this in. So, so she goes, then when you take it out, it got to be gone for 30 days with the eyelashes. Because the, eye, the eyes are the, uh, 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 what, the witness to the soul. Amen. With the eyelashes. <laughs> Man, God back there laughing. He said, I got to see it. Baby, you know, look, 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 that's a good look right there. Look, see, that, look, see that look right there? See that look right there? See that, see that look? See that? That's a good look. You got to put that little slick back. That's a good look. See that? Uh, all natural right there. Huh? Huh? I know. I'm going to tell you something. Y'all be talking about them foreheads. Tyler Bay got the biggest, prettiest forehead I ever seen in my life. You hear me? She get paid with it. You hear me? Y'all keep talking about that forehead. That boy, hello. You he better play with it. But, <laughs> but beauty is within, not without. Amen. Amen. And then what I'm, what I'm trying to get you to understand is, she is right now, she's sitting here. How long, Lord? She's sitting here, she said, how long can this last? She's perplexed. How am I going to do this for 30 days? Bitch, okay. sir. It's going to seem like a thousand years. 30 days don't seem like a thousand years, Bishop. She's perplexed. But if she is about her father's business, Amen. she, in a moment of being perplexed, we're going to find out what she should do. Because here we are, he said, just then, the men sent by Cornelius found Simon's house. Standing outside the gate, they asked if a man named Simon Peter was staying there. Meanwhile, Peter was puzzling over having to wear his own hair for the next 30 days. <laughs> this it said the Holy Spirit said to him three men have come looking for you what I told you yesterday missionary Mary Lee it was a God what I told you yesterday uh, 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 Deacon Wayman it was a God so what I'm trying to tell you right now if you know that the man that came first was delivered don't miss yours don't miss yours. And the way I the way I make sure I don't miss mine is I don't I don't walk in that I already knew. I walk in if I already knew, then God wouldn't have sent me to get what I didn't know. You got a woman of God? Stay with me. Just the end of me, and I said this again, standing outside the gate. Meanwhile, Peter was puzzling over the vision. The Holy Spirit said to him, three men have come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs. Now, what's your conversation? Huh? Three men. Now, the Holy Spirit talking to me, I should be able to talk to them. So my question to the Holy Spirit, my brother is, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Who are they? Get up and go down there. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. What they want? Get up and go down. There. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Am I in trouble? Get up and go down. There. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Are they gonna kill me? Get up and go down. There. See? And you'll miss your blessing because by the time you ask all the questions, the men done. Oh, no. The men done left. They don't love with your blessing. Many of you say, well, I heard from the Lord, and, and I, I, I love it when y'all get beside yourself with Bishop, and they tell Bishop, Bishop, you ain't the only one, you're from God. <laughs> you're absolutely right. But I promise you, if God tell me something, and he tell you something, he gave me the authority to say, listen to him, don't you listen to her. Now, if he tell you something and not told me nothing, then I will listen to you. Okay, 
I don't, y'all don't get this. Come here, man of God. Come here, stand up there with your wife. Wife, go up there. Come here, wife. My God, let me show y'all something. Ah, boy. Powerful woman of God, vessel of God, pastor of the church. Now they're in their homes, and there is something that she wants to do, and God told him not to do it. And so she, but he told her to do it. And then what she tries to do, she tries to pull her pastor card, and you ain't pastor, not your wife. And when there's a disagreement in the house, God say, the one I gave the authority to is responsible. So if you follow your wife and you go down the wrong road, she ain't gonna get beat. Y'all hear this? The one I gave the authority to in the house. Now, now, now here we are. We in church. We in church. See the pastor. He the minister. And God speak to him. And God speak to her. And, they and God told her something different than he told him. This one, I'm so glad I ain't none of them. I promise you I'm so glad I ain't none of them. But then the problem is because he has the authority at home, he thinks he has the authority over her in the church because she's, she's his wife. But he don't. Huh? So now, so now, when she listened to him, and God told her to do something, so, and he, she does something out of order, well, what, 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 what Pastor, um, you know, he is my husband, and, 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 and he told me, I ain't finna sit him down. Come on. I ain't finna sit him down. She had the responsibility of running the church. I ain't gonna sit him down. Who wanna sit down? Her. So the same thing happens in the house with the husband and wife. Men, you are responsible. This is what I don't understand. So now, if God tell her something and tell me something, and there's a contradiction between what we're saying. He said, the one I gave the authority is responsible. Y'all got this? Amen. Now, I'm going to leave. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to sit down, man. I'm going to leave this alone. Because I'm so tired of these, 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 these children walking around like they got the authority in the house over mom and dad. <laughs> Talk, You working two jobs, uh, I hope you're on Facebook. You working two jobs because you're not walking in the authority of God and you letting them have the authority. Oh the one I gave the authority is the responsible party. So if you let if you let them tell you what to do versus what God told you to do, God say they ain't gonna wear it. I want y'all to hear this because I'm going somewhere with this. So that I don't get confused. And y'all, like I said, I, I don't envy y'all too. I promise y'all. Because if you don't know God, that is a very perplexing place to be. But at the end of the day, all pastors got to do, even in the house, I ain't gonna tell her, but all she got to do is turn it spiritual. turn a spiritual with her own agenda. Y'all hear me? Because when she makes it spiritual, he's got to what? He got to be, he, he's the one got to submit now. There are times, brother, just because, just because I'm the bishop and the pastor and the man of my house, there are times if I love my wife, I submit. <laughs> why can't, we, why don't women follow us? Why won't women submit to you? Because you think you're absolute men. Because the Bible said, don't say in the letter that you should submit. But I'm going to tell you something. Love, true love, sincere love, it submits. I submit to the way my wife feels. I submit. Why? Where there's no submission, there's no caring. 
And what God is telling us in the scripture tonight is that Peter cared about God because he learned his lesson. Y'all gonna stop me before I before I, before I whoop up in here. He learned his lesson through Christ. He cared about God because he learned his lesson through Christ. Do y'all hear this? I would hoop, but that's not none of me. And I ain't finna be nobody else. But in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. But what I'm trying to tell you, I want you to, I want you to, when you leave here, I want you to feel this. Man of God, in the church, when the woman of God says something, just get up and go. Woman of God, when a man, when, when the husband tell you to do something and it ain't church related, just get up and do it. And that don't go for them. Even the bowl of ice cream. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning. Listen, saints, because I want you to hear this. Don't miss this. I'm, I'm, about, to, I'm about to sit down. It says, get up and go. Don't go with, and go without hesitation. I don't have because the moment I hesitate, my blessing... My opportunity. Man of God, you want her to explain. Bishop, 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 Bishop. Why, why, why should I continue? Don't hesitate. In other words, don't question. He told Peter. Peter, three men out there. Get up and go without hesitation. Why? Peter had the assurance and God didn't send him without hesitation until he... Y'all better miss, don't miss this. God didn't send him without hesitation. Remember what we did today? That talk we had today? Huh? God was telling you, don't call nothing he made unclean. And then as we were talking... Uh, 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 we went outside, we looked at the air conditioning and we came back inside and we went outside we looked at it again, then all of a sudden I left and when I left the sheet went up and you went up with it where did the sheet go? to heaven when God covers you, he said there's going to come a season where you ain't going to need no more covering you are going to become the cover When the sheep went up to heaven, it took you with it. And what it did made you a covering for those that you used to call un... Notice in the, in the, in the earlier part, I, I really want to go, um, I, I really want to, I, I really didn't want to go there. But he tells Cornelius later on, he said, it's against my law to walk in the house of a Gentile. It's against the law. The law of Moses. But not the law of Jesus. Because the law of Jesus says we love everybody and we hate no one. But the law of Moses said an eye and a two. Watch this. And I'm two. Softly, man of God. Softly. He said, so Peter went down and said, Notice what Peter said. He said, I'm not afraid. I don't know what y'all want. I don't know what you want from me. I don't know why you came to get me. But he said, I'm not afraid. But see, y'all are afraid. That's just like the lady, I told y'all a story about the, about, about the people robbing the bank. The man said, lay on the floor and give me all your money. And the lady said, why? I can just give you money. Why well, I got to lay on the floor? <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is, just do it. Whatever God says, just go. My question to you is, do you love the Lord? I, do you desire, how many people desire to, to be obedient unto the Bible? 
How many people desire to be obedient unto the Bible? Raise your hand if you desire to be obedient, uh, obedient to, unto the Bible. So God said, if you desire to be obedient unto the Bible, I'm going to teach you how to obey me. Listen to this, saints. He told him, he said, Peter, go down. And Peter said, I'm not afraid. I don't see that. He said, I am the one you are looking for. Y'all see this? I am the one. You, so now once you know you've been elevated by God, I don't care who come looking for me. I'm the one you're looking for. Come on back though. Lock it up. Block it up. Those who desire to obey God, they don't run. They go. And they go. Oh my God. Once you've entered, oh my God, the heavenly realm, you go just like your blessings come to you in the twinkling of an eye. When, Lord? I don't think that's too long. Blessing go. Come here, man of God. Sit down, man of God. Now watch this. God, stay right there. See, this time you came out with $820. <laughs> That's why I told you stay right there. <laughs> but the bottom line is just go. Because when they came looking for him, notice what I'm going to close this out with. He says, I am the one you're looking for. Why have you come? Why have you come? I come because God is sending you somewhere that you don't know. I come to get you. Come on, woman of God. me with all these issues because God is sending me to quench her fears have a seat woman of God come here woman of God not you come here woman of God why have you come to me with all these issues because God is see they come so you can understand that you have been sent for purpose What y'all want to do, go sit down, woman of God. What y'all want to do, y'all want to go without them coming, sending yourself. Because if I send myself, I'm going to send myself to somebody that's going to prop me up, make me look good, and make me look holy. But when God sends them to me and tell me, and I ask, why have you come? What is your issue? And God said, now I have sent you to someone by letting them come to you. Just go. Just go. God said, I have elevated you for those to come to you. No longer send to yourself. This missionary work we get ready to do. As we walk the street, as we pray, we're not gonna have to knock on doors. People just gonna walk out and say, Will you pray for me? Amen. Then you then and only then you'll know you were sent. Why have you come? Why did you come to me and tell me that you had a legion of demons so you'll know that I was sent to them out? Why have you come? 
We so busy trying to send ourselves and do the work for God on behalf of God, and God said, that ain't even what I'm concerned about. Just wait on them to come to you. And, you, and I, I remember, I, I know many times y'all come, you say, Bishop, how do you know? Because you came and God sent me to quench your fears. Amen? Amen. Today, you call, we, we called you, we talked. I said, you want me over there? You said, if you want to, Bishop. And I didn't say, so when she said, if you want to, Bishop, so what would it sound like? It sounded like she left the choice up to me. But her being a child at the spirit of Jesus. God said, I, I let her say it that way. To see, will you go where I send you? She could have handled it by herself. Oh, but when we, when we paid a visit with Villa today, she felt so much more comfortable with Bishop standing there and he let ladies stand in there. And when she started talking to him, I felt better too. <laughs> so I went. Because I was sick. Why have you come? Lord, why why you come by? Why is this the, why is this mess bothering me today? I need to send you somewhere. I need to send you something where I was having a good day. Here come my issue. I need to. Your issue come bother you. Why are you bothering me? I need to. Ooh, don't miss this. Just go. What did it say? Just go. When they come, just go. Just go. So everybody say, just go. Just go. Just go. Just go. Just go. Why did Monday night come? Just go. <laughs> Why did Thursday night come? Just go. <laughs> Why did Lessons of the Heart come? Just go. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. Worship Sunday at 10 o'clock, come. Let's go. <laughs> Bishop, you so crazy. You done tricked me again. <laughs> Sunday comes. Let's see if you will just go where you know to go because if you won't go where you know to go, you sure ain't gonna go where God don't. Where did you, you sure ain't gonna go where you don't know that God wants you to go. It's hard to get that out, but did everybody understand that? If I don't go where I know to go, when God wants me to go somewhere that I don't know about, I ain't gonna go, I surely ain't going there. Y'all don't even understand. Come on, man of God. This man who is a stranger unto me, he might become a police officer one day. And I go and help him. And my little, my little Jaden might be in trouble with some police officers ready to shoot him. And this police officer, he said, that's Bishop Robinson grandson. Yeah. All because I just went. He stood in. Oh, yeah. Just. Wow. I hope y'all felt this. Just. Monday night come. Y'all say it like you, like you really feel the message. Monday night come. Yes, Lord. Thursday night come. Yes, Lord. Sunday come. Yes, Lord. If I can go where I know to go, I won't question God when he sends me where I don't know to go. Yes. Because what he set me up is for a blessing where my child, my grandchild, my great-grandchild might be saved by the one I just went to help I, I, I was in church the other day. I was at the park the other day. And I'm looking around. I said, why are you talking to him, Missionary Sylvia? Oh, that's my, 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 my sister. So, so. I said, Lord, 
see everybody in the spirit of Jesus related to somebody. You never know who you're entertaining. You never know who you're helping. Why have you come here? I'm like, why they coming to, why? Look, he said, don't ask me, should you go? Should you drive 200 miles? Whether they gonna be there or not. Just go. And when you take that mentality, watch God. Just stop what you won't stop in your life. He won't stop it because you won't just go. Lord, I just wanted to stop. Just go. When I just go, he will just stop. When I just go, don't question. It will just stop. Ain't that beautiful? What's the opposite of go? So why can't the thing I want in my life stop? Because I won't just Oh my God. Praise the Lord. Give God a hand praise, somebody. Give God a hand praise. Just go. Just go. Don't question. Just go. Mm -hmm. We're getting out of here. You said I was worth saving. <laughs> 